What's up, y'all? It's Daniel Yashumaye. Before we get to my first shoe review of 2022, just a quick plug for my new podcast, The Fresh Kicks Podcast, which is currently available on Apple, Spotify, and wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. I am also simulcasting or uploading videos of said podcast onto this channel, so if you'd rather see with some pictures, but also kind of just hear along the way, definitely watch it here, or you can subscribe and find it on your favorite podcast app. And while the first week was five days of nonstop content, looking at the numbers and the analytics and whatnot, I've decided to change the format starting in week two this week to doing two 15 minute episodes, once on Tuesday, once on Thursday, and a 30 minute episode on Saturday. That way we have only three episodes to catch up with. And then you can also mix and match with the YouTube channel with my normal sneaker review videos or anything else of that matter. So remember, you can catch Fresh Kicks podcast on your favorite podcast app and slash or also on this YouTube channel. So not only be sure to like and subscribe and click that notification bell on this channel, but be sure to subscribe to Fresh Kicks on your favorite podcast app. So now we get to my first sneaker review of 2022 and spoiler alert, Boost isn't dead. I know it's been what, almost 10 years now since Boost has come out and the Ultra Boost remains one of, if not the most comfortable technology out there. However, I will say the Overbreak React it's definitely neck and neck for that. I think it comes down to preference at that point. But we have seen already the Ultra Boost 2022 come out, 21, 19, 18, 5.0, whatever. And right now it seems like Adidas is really leaning into the Ultra Boost 1.0 DNA to allow themselves to do some quirkier things with the silhouette and colorways. And in the last review of an Ultra Boost, it was the Love Unites colorway, and I said it reinvigorated my love for the Ultra Boost silhouette. I talked about how I was gonna cut off the tongue tabs, and I did because I think this is a much cleaner look. I love the mismatched colorway on this. I love how loud and rambunctious and ostentatious the colors are on this colorway. So of course, I was all about this latest colorway that was released maybe a week or so ago and it's the Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0 DNA Nerf. Resembling Hasbro's popular Nerf guns, though not believed to be an actual collaboration with the Hasbro brand, the Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0 DNA Nerf is constructed using recycled plastics, courtesy of Parley, and features an range of bright colors that don similar themes to their widely recognized packaging. While the shoe's colors are mismatched in their colorways, both shoes do feature similarities in their design. They both feature a white prime knit upper for the base, orange sock liner, black heel tab or heel counter, a white cage, a bright blue thick with two C's or a Q boost midsole, and a black outsole placed at the bottom. On the right shoe, you find bright yellow on the toe box, orange laces with yellow aglets, blue mesh around the heels, and boost written in bright blue on the heel counter. On the left shoe, you feature bright orange on the toe box, yellow laces with orange tips, yellow mesh around the heels, and boost written in yellow on the heel counter. However, when it comes to the laces, you can see that I decided to swap them so that the orange laces pop against the yellow on the left shoe and the yellow laces pop against the blue on the right shoe. Now, when it comes to fit, I'm normally a size nine across the board. That's Ultra Boost, Air Force Ones, Jordan Ones, Pumas, New Balance, Asics, etc. I have a normal size foot, definitely not wide, maybe a little bit narrow in the back. I like a lot more wiggle room in the toe box and don't like a lot of lockdown in the midfoot. I have found that as of late, I have been removing midsoles from my regular true to size, size nine in Ultra Boost because I wanted more wiggle room in the toe box and midfoot. I have said that I am more likely a 9.25 in shoe size, but that size doesn't exist. So I either get a nine and remove the insole or I get a nine and a half and wear thicker socks. Long story short, I ordered true to size a size nine in this silhouette and I find that this shoe fits my foot pretty perfectly. It has a lot of wiggle room in the toe box. It may be a wider toe box than maybe some folks are used to, or it's because I haven't walked around a whole lot today and my feet haven't swollen to what they normally do at the end of a long winter's workday. But no matter what, I think if it does get to where my feet feel a little tight, I can always remove my insole. So I'm 
very confident in saying, go to your true to size, whatever you normally order in the 1.0 DNA, or maybe even the 1.0, if that's going up half a size or staying true to size, whatever, do what you do. I think doing that is gonna be just fine. And when it comes to comfort, gosh, there really isn't a whole lot of things that feel like slipping your foot into a fresh pair of Ultra Boost sneakers. This shoe is still one of, if not the most, undisputed king of comfort when it comes to sneaker technologies. Though I will hear arguments for the Presto React or for the Overbreak React as being the other two that could potentially dethrone this silhouette or even a Yeezy. But no matter what, I am 100% confident in saying top five most comfortable technology, most definitely a top three, and I could accept someone saying the most comfortable out there. And this silhouette with the prime knit upper, well, the prime knit parley recycled upper and that boost midsole, super comfortable. If you love it, you're gonna love it. And if you don't love it, well, chances are you're not gonna love it because it feels like every other Ultra Boost, the, the comfortable ones, the ones that feel really, really good. It's a comfortable shoe. And you should know that by now, based on the history, the almost 10 year history of the Ultra Boost technology and silhouette. Two things I failed to mention is that the back of the shoes feature pull tabs, like not just the pull tab on the back of the tongue, but they actually have that nylon uh, pull tag on the back or pull tab, if you will. On the right shoe, it is in that bright orange and it almost looks like a peachy orange. And on the left shoe, it's in the bright blue. So you can see that it mismatches because the on the left shoe, you have the yellow mesh and you have the orange toe box and then you have blue in the back. You have the blue mesh, the yellow toe box, and the bright orange pull tab on the back. And the second thing is, now that I'm saying about it, I've got three things. The second thing is your tongue tabs on your tongues. There's a standard uh, Adidas one with the branding on there, but again, the left shoe is in blue, the right shoe has the, the yellow. And then the last thing is you have yellow removable insoles that say, I'll put it upside down there, and plastic waste made with Parley Ocean Plastic, and then it has a QR code. So it's no longer just the standard black insole or whatever solid color insole with the Adidas branding and or Parley branding. So yeah, uh, as you can see, and as I mentioned, I did decide to switch the laces. I know that they wanted the change between the bright orange here and they wanted the yellow laces here and the yellow here on the toe box and the bright. But what I wanted to do was create a difference in the mesh color that's here on the heel. So that's why I went with orange because the orange contrasts the yellow and the yellow contrasts the blue. And honestly, I'm fine with it. It does add a little bit of, mitch of closer matchy matchy, but it's still honestly to the naked eye and to the original, just like, oh yeah, that looks great. It looks mismatched. And I think that's fine because the aglets match yellow here. The blue matches yellow. I'm okay with that matchy matchy. It, it works for me. And um, it's okay, right? Nobody, nobody's gonna say, oh man, you're matching the wrong way because they're mismatched shoes anyway. So I like it. Curious what you think and how you would do the laces. Uh, let's, let us know in the comment section down below. What would you do on the laces? That's what I did. And there we go. My thoughts on the Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0 DNA Nerf. Let's talk about it in the comment section down below. Do you like this colorway? Do you, do you mess with or F with the Ultra Boost anymore? I have said that I've kind of gone off Ultra Boost. I've really locked into Ultra 4Ds now. I just really like those shoes a little bit more. But as I just also mentioned, I had a previous favorite Ultra Boost that made me get into it. And this is another favorite, not the favorite. I don't know why I said that, but it's definitely one that I go, yeah, I'm gonna get that. I, I, I like it, it's loud, it's a good spring summer color. Let's go for it. And down here in Texas, what do we have like three weeks of winter like that's about it and it's not even three weeks of continuous winter it's like 21 to 28 days spread out among four months but anyway regardless i really like this colorway i'm glad i'm getting it and i wish adidas would do more of these types of colorways in fact i know what i was going to say do y'all remember and i'm going to mispronounce it but it's k-o-l-o-r is it color color the, the the mexican in me wants to say color but for all I know, it's German and it's Kolor. I don't know. Some Somebody tell me, Amado, are you gonna tell me in the comment section down below how to pronounce it or Orbitowski between your pishes? You're gonna go, well, mate, because for some reason I think you're British or or Australian or something like that. Mate, it's Kolor because of the fish and chips or the Barbie or or crumpets or tea time. Anyway, let's talk about it in the comment section down below. Do you like this colorway? Does it remind you of the Kolor collaboration, which is a grail of mine, which I'll never be able to get because it's too expensive and I can't find my cup my size. But anyway, what do you think about the shoe? Let's talk about it in the comment section down below. All right, so to all of you out there, wherever you are, thanks for watching and thanks for listening to the Fresh Kicks podcast. Hint, hint, hint. Stay tuned and just chill till the next episode.